Self-control. Say self-control. Self-control. Say self-control. Self-respect. What is self-control? It's the ability for you to control your emotions, your thoughts, and your utterances. Your emotions, your thoughts, and your utterances. Ability to make sure that you control what you hear, what you see, and what you say. That's self-control. Self-control gives you edge in life. It makes you attractive. It puts things in your charge. Or it puts you in charge of things. Discipline is a foundation for any vision or any destiny that will thrive. Amen. It's not skills. It's your discipline. Your remaining on top depends on your discipline. But self-control, self-respect, and value, strong value system, strong value system are things that can be imparted or can be developed or can be trained through good parenting, good coaching, good mentorship. And also, if you have missed all of that, we can be imparted by the Holy Ghost. So I'm trusting the Lord that in this series, if you lack self-control, the Holy Ghost will impart you in Jesus' name. So Heavenly Father, I receive impartation to be able to control my impulses, my desires, my thought, my emotions in the name of Jesus. I am not what I say. I'm not what I think. I'm not what I fear. I am a child of God. I will speak in accordance to the word of the living God, to who I am in the spirit, in the name of Jesus. So right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I put under control. I put under control, put under control my, utterances, my utterances. My utterances. I say my utterances. My, utterances, my, feelings, my feelings. My feelings. My feelings and my thinking. And my thinking I, will I will control what I hear. What I, hear. I, will I will control what I see and what I say by the help of the Holy Ghost. I will receive. I will receive discipline for self-control. Self say Amen. amen. Number two is self-respect. Self-respect. This makes you so attractive. This gives you a lot of room in many places. It helps others to love you because once you respect yourself, you will start to respect others. And then it's your part to dignity. Self-respect is your part to dignity. And dignity will always give you what they call, I mean, it will, it will make people always give you space. Amen. It gives you goodwill. David behaved himself very well. Self-respect will make you obey rules, obey order, comport yourself. You are not the head of the church. You will sit down where you belong. You will do what you are told to do. You will keep yourself in boundary because you learned growing up self-respect. Self-respect is knowing your weakness from your strength. You will know your strength and you know your weakness. You know what you cannot do. You know what you can do. You know where you belong. You know where you don't belong. That's self-respect. So you do not go to lion's den and say, I can capture a lion. Because you do not respect the lion. Amen. And you pay the price of fully. Self-respect gives you, it puts you in boundary. It keeps you on the path. It makes you respect yourself, which will make you respect other people. There are reasons in the Bible where God said, where the Bible said, some, we, must not, we must not do some things. Some things are not edifying. I mean, they are not edifying. They are not, I mean, expedient. They are not good for you to do. Not because it's just not good, 
But because it invites what I call dishonor, it invites dishonor. Don't do it because others will look down on you. You are a pastor. There's a way to dress. That you're a woman, you're a married woman. There is friends to keep. I mean, you're a married woman. There are friends you should not keep. There are things you should not say. So there are things that self-respect will keep in the bathroom. Not because those things are not good, but they are not good for you. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. They're not good for you. It's, it's called comportment. It's called comportment. Isaiah 52 verse 7 is talking about God's servant. He said, his voice shall not be heard on the street. His voice shall, it shall not be seen on the street. He, he comport himself. He's not just going around touching everybody and playing around like a, like, like a, like a, like a lunatic. No, he's a man that is comported within a boundary because he has learned to self to respect himself. And it gives you strong personality that makes you attractive. Amen. When you are respecting yourself, you come into the sanctuary, you are told to sit down there, you sit down there. You are said to sit at the back, you sit at the back. Amen. You don't say, I am more than everybody in the house, and you come to the front, and then they not ask you to go to the back. And they and say, oh, oh, why are they disrespecting me? No, you are not respecting yourself. Amen. The Bible says, let those who are married in church pretend as if they are not married. Why? It's self-respect. Don't come to church and demonstrate a public display of affection. It's not in church. Do that in the room. Amen. Even there are some countries today in Middle East that PDA is, is a crime. Yeah, it's a crime. So it's not because it's not good, because it's distracting to others who are trusting God for fruit of the womb. You are, there's something you don't vaunt. You don't, you don't, it's just respect yourself. Respect yourself. There's some play, don't play with your woman. Respect yourself. Respect yourself. Amen. Respect yourself. You are a man. You are a, a father. She's just 12 years old. Or 14 years old, and you're holding her in the waist. Come on, that's disrespectful. Somebody they say, Amen. Say, I will respect myself. Now I know that has to have been imparted through discipline. And many of us may have missed that in a lifetime, but I mean, I mean in, in, uh, growing up, but through the Holy Ghost, may the Holy Ghost impart us with self respect in Jesus' name. So, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I know my boundary. I know who I am. I know what I'm called to do. I know what I'm called I know my to function. Do. I know my function. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Keep me, O oh God. Keep me, O oh God. In my path. In my path. In my lane. In my lane. Keep my tongue. Keep my tongue. Keep my destiny. Keep my destiny. Keep my relationship. Keep my relationship. O oh Lord, grant me. O oh Lord, grant me. Impartation. Of self-control. Self and self-respect. And self-respect. Say amen. Amen. Say louder, amen. Amen. And the third one that we mention is strong value system. A strong value system is a divine value system. It's called godliness. Say godliness. It's called godliness. It's called doctrine. Learning doctrine. Knowing how to behave in the house of God. Thinking the way God thinks. Defining things the way God defines stuff. Seeing it the way God sees it is all godliness. There is worldliness. There are doctrines of men. There are traditions of men. There are doctrines of the devils. The Bible says in this end time, they will not listen to sound doctrines, but they will give themselves over to doctrines of the devils. The Bible said they are given over to strange and diverse doctrines. That is how you know children. They are tossed to and fro with strange and diverse doctrines because they have no strong value system. One of the things that makes a man of God strong, the instruction is for him to go and teach doctrine. Men of God are supposed to teach doctrine. Say doctrine. Say doctrine. Say doctrine. 
Doctrine is light. Doctrine is truth in the body of Christ. And so you are supposed to be sound in doctrine. That is what makes you an elder. Sound in doctrine. This sound in doctrine. This sound in doctrine. Sound in doctrine. That is knowing the truth. Knowing the doctrine of the law. Knowing the doctrine of the apostles. Knowing the doctrine of the church. And then teach it and keep doctrine. May God help us all to keep doctrine in Jesus' name. And that is talking about your value system. Your value system. Your value system. What is more important to you? How do you define? How do you say it? It's all about looking into the world and defining things the way God sees it. Then your value will change. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm ready this morning. I'm ready this morning. I'm ready this morning. I'm ready this morning. To worship the Lord. To worship the Lord. Can we stand up right now? I'm ready. I'm ready. To worship the Lord. To worship the Lord. To praise the Lord. To praise the Lord. I'm ready to praise the Lord. I'm ready to praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For sound doctrine. For sound doctrine. For strong value system. For strong value system. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, my God. Lord, my impart me, impart me with self-control. Self impart me impart with self-respect. Self impart me impart with divine value. With divine value, divine value system. Divine value oh Lord, system. take away oh Lord, take ungodliness. Away. ungodliness. In, the In the name of Jesus. I stand for truth. I stand, I stand for, for righteousness. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, discipline me, train me, teach me, impart me. I do not want to learn from darkness, from wickedness, from sin, from iniquity. Oh Lord, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Pray in tongues right now, Masha. Oh, 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 o